Um, it is a feminist film. So the first section we want to think about, I want to think about with you, is Barbie, feminism, and a gospel that saves. Okay? So first, it's feminist. The tagline of the movie is, Barbie is everything, and he's just Ken. Okay? Um, in Barbie land, there is President Barbie, there is Dr. Barbie, a Barbie who's won the Nobel Prize in physics. Um, Gerwig, as I've said in an interview, explicitly states that Ken was invented after Barbie to burnish Barbie's position in our eyes and in the world. That kind of creation myth is the opposite of the creation myth in Genesis. I think that's interesting. The film is designed to overturn a patriarchal view of the Genesis creation story. Um, because Barbie is everything in Barbie land, Barbie has a great day every day. Um, Ken only has a great day if Barbie looks at him. Uh, this clip gives a feel. I think we've got another clip coming up. <laughs> um, so if you've not seen this, these clips are going to be like, what is this? Um, I hope it will make you want to go and watch the film. Um, so, every, so Ken's world is contingent on Barbie's world. He's only having a good day if Barbie looks at him and engages him. Okay, that is, so Ken is entirely dependent on Barbie. So in a simplistic way, the, the, the film is clearly feminist, right? So the, the old problem of Barbie being an unattainably beautiful doll with bust, you know, uh, waist and ankles, which wouldn't be humanly possible, you know, that whole thing about the Barbie dolls, that's tackled head on. Um, and actually, the opening sequence of the film is weird, and it's like it's telling the new myth. And the myth, it's actually, the opening sequence is a deliberate homage to 2001 A Space Odyssey, um, where the, the apes in that bit are replaced by little girls playing with baby dolls. Okay? They're playing with baby dolls, little babies, and then a massive, huge Margot Robbie appears and starts smashing the baby dolls. So this feminist Barbie is saying that children and girls and women in this world are not merely agents of kind of uh, motherhood, they are agents of change and, and their, own, their own people. Does that make sense? So children, little girls are not just good for babying, actually they're going to move beyond this. That's the opening sequence of the entire film. And you're watching like, what is this? Um, this generation of girls, says Barbie, will not be constricted to mere motherhood. Um, she's an agent of feminist liberation. Um, so far, so feminist, okay. Final bit of feminism for you. When Barbie ends up in the real world, which, spoiler for everyone who hasn't seen it, but, you know, it is an evening about Barbie. When she ends up in the real world, she goes to the real world from Barbie land because she has to find the person who has been playing with her in a kind of overly rough way and fix the disruption in the space-time space continuum which this kind of rough play and these bad thoughts from this person that's playing with her have caused. Because what happens is she gets Barbie in Barbie land, suddenly gets irrepressible thoughts of death, which is hilarious, we'll come to it next week, um, and she gets concerns about cellulite. So she gets these kind of interruptions into Barbie land, and in order to get rid of these thoughts and this concern about cellulite, she has to travel to the real world. And she meets um, this young girl who has a mother, and it turns out it's the mother who has actually caused these bad thoughts in Barbie, because the mother herself is concerned about death and concerned about cellulite and all these problems that real women have. And the real woman, the mum is played by America Ferreira, she has to then travel back to Barbie land with Barbie in order to help her fix it. They return to Barbie land to discover that it is now Kendom. Because Ken has gone to the real world and seen its patriarchy and thought this is quite nice. And so he decides in Barbie's absence to turn Barbie land into a Kendom where the Kens rule. And it's now patriarchal. Okay? Um, again, if you've not seen it, you're thinking this is strange. It kind of works. So instead of a Barbie dreamland house, <laughs> Ken has his Mojo, jo Mojo Doja Casa house, um, and all the other Barbies have been captured by this kind of, this patriarchy, and they appear to be enjoying their lives, but we soon discover that they're actually trapped in this kind of false consciousness. They don't realise how they, that they've been trapped into this kind of patriarchal way of thinking. And they're living their lives in subservience to, Ken, to Ken's, apart from Alan, anyway. Um, so it's almost as though they're drugged, and this is when, then where we get to the speech, okay? And if you've seen the film, you will remember this speech, and you may have even seen this speech on social media if you haven't seen the film. It is kind of the viral moment of the film, and it's the kind of feminist cry of the film. Can we watch it, please? 
Okay. Um, so you can see why it's grabbed the attention of women in particular. Um, it is, I, I've met several women who have told me they, they've watched, they cry every time they watch it because it resonates so deeply with their experience of living in the world. Um, it has clearly touched a, a kind of a nerve and resonated, particularly with women, but actually more broadly than that as well. Um, and it's actually so powerful, that speech, in the kind of, in the role of the film, in its role in the film, that actually that speech becomes, in the, in the plot, a mechanism for the salvation of women. Um, which is really interesting to me. Essentially, she preaches to all the other women to save them from their false consciousness they've fallen under with the Kens in the Kendom. That's really, really interesting to me. Um, this is a rallying cry for women everywhere, and it's kind of the feminist climax of the film, and it's definitely one of the most memorable moments. Apparently, she recorded that 30 times on set. Um, and that, presumably, is the best version. <laughs>